Hey guys, Wolfie here. This is Ruby Volume 8 B Prediction. So, uh, for this, is you guys know the disclaimer that's coming. Any opinion in this video is my opinion, my opinion only. And a few things before I get to the meaning of the video. So, <clears throat> I did say uh, later on yesterday or today would be for this video. So, it's a little heads up. So, I'm doing my best to keep my word on that. Um, either way, so this is going to be the second half of Ruby Volume 8 because as to, it's a bit of a quick reminder of, you know, the whole pe the people behind Ruby, you know, since they're making it, they are on an extended hiatus. It's set to return early next month, so that way it gives us time, you know, to hype up, get ready for it. So like I said in the, um, the previous video, it, this volume so far was definitely what the show needed to help boost um, the overall morale with, um, like, you know, the show's, like, you know, quote-unquote ratings, if that makes any sense. And I hope this does bring some people back. So, so with that bit out of the way, so this is, like, the second half, like I said, is slated to come back early next month. So, I'm all ex I'm actually I'm excited for this, which is a bit of a surprise, so that's that and that. Now we're just going to go into the uh, not we're not going to rewatch uh, War, which is where uh, the show left off of Volume Eight in the first half. So this is our uh, Eight B because you know some shows you know they do a certain number of episodes and they take a break and then they come back with the other half. So that's how I'm doing this. So uh, just a little um, for your information, so to speak. So we do know that um, in the episode called called War. We do know a lot has happened. They discovered um, Penny's body just outside the Schnee Manor. That's where it was left off. I felt it was a it was a surprising for a hanger, but surprisingly good. I actually do agree with that sort of call, you know, by having you know the you know Rainbow finding um, Penny's body, that sort of thing. I I actually like that. <clears throat> And then you also heard like some point at some point early on in the volume where it's like as like this was after you know Nora got to shock all that jazz. She's like eh. so it does look like she is coming too. I do feel that um and I'm just kind of going to change certain things from the um some of the earlier videos about volume eight. So I actually do have a bit of a change of stance of sorts. The sense of like you know. <clears throat> How many um, deaths on the good guys? So, <clears throat> forgive me here. So, um, I do feel that Nora is going to pull through. She's going to recover. Uh, <clears throat> I, I do need to get some water in a little bit, so I'll let you know when I'm going to pause the video. So, um, I do think that Nora is going to recover. Green will be a little bit slower than Weiss, but... Alas, I do feel that Nora is going to pull through. Now, Penny is going to be an interesting um, situation because what Watts did, I'm like, holy, I'm like, holy crap. I'm like, this just might be the one, one of the bigger things that gets uh, Ironwood in bigger trouble. So I do feel that for the second half, we're going to be seeing more evidence show up Putting Ironwood in a really bad light. Meaning that, you know, the whole thing with Nora, the whole thing with Penny, it's going to get revealed that Ironwood had something to do with it, with what happened to Penny. And the whole thing with Penny getting the uh, winter mated powers, I mean, I, I'm a little on the fence, honestly, regarding if Penny's going to survive or die as we know her. And if she does die, I feel that Nora's going to be inheriting the winter mater powers that way, which helps her survive. But we don't really know to be safe. And that's it on that. So, um, for those of you who may remember the whole, um, Ruby Predictions, um, mini series I have for Volume 8, where the whole, like, like, thread I noticed on Tumblr, I don't think some of that's going to happen. I mean, when I noticed that th in that particular thread, I mean, because this is basically off a little bit of some recent memory, you know, 
people can say whatever they want, but <clears throat> now that I'm thinking about that little post in a bit of a, like, in retrospect now, there's a lot of stuff I noticed here that I don't think is going to happen. Because um, the whole thing with, like, what some people were saying from, like, Aaron was quoted as saying this, it may not, it may, some of it, some of it may not happen. Because, again, some people may have been caught saying this, but did they really say it? And that's where I'm like, I have to, you know, start um, re-evaluating certain things I'm reading. So, a little bit, you know, I'm like, I don't think some stuff is happening. So, that's it on that. So, um, there was an interview, um, I think somebody had with Miles Luna about Volume 9. So, and I, fortunately, I mean, I like the fact that he kept it super vague. So, I mean... In all honesty, it's just like people are starting to take certain things from the writers a little bit too seriously. I'm like, here I am. I just observe whatever I'm able to. I'm like, you know what? You can think of uh, think of what, however they you can interpret whatever is being said, however you want. But it's like, in all honesty, it's like take it with a grain of salt because things can change in time. So, um, with that, uh, the whole thing with the whole question of Bumblebee, because, again, the thread, you know, kind of met, you know, um, and part of my language, because this is kind of, this is what was part of the um, thread. You know, said Aaron, who is uh, Blake's voice actress, and Barbara, who is Yang's uh, voice actress, you know, they were both saying, oh, shit. And, and that's part of, that was cool. They were cool with saying that. But we don't know what that means. It's just that you can't really be taking a voice actor's or voice actress's word, like, as if it's, like, whatever. I mean, unless it's confirmed that they could say it, I mean, you got to take some, some of the stuff they say with a grain of salt. And it's like, with all thing with my own son, you know, there's, he's mentioning you know, something else is happening in Volume 9, you know, I'm like, okay. We're going to see, let's see what that, what that's translating to. Because in the sense of, like, the romance side, you know, of the show, you know, we have really yet to really see anyone be Cup Canna outside of maybe Red and Nora. And for the record, I don't really ship them. I mean, just, that's just me. Because, you know, the whole thing with childhood friends, you know, trying to become more. And sometimes it doesn't work out that way. So it's like, eh, yeah. So that's the whole, re that's the main reason why I don't ship them is because it's like, just because you've known each other since you were kids doesn't always mean it's meant for something more. Now, um, regarding, uh, so that's like the romance side of the second half. So, some, when it comes to death, like I said, um, Penny, I feel is going to be on the fence. I do feel Nora is going to survive. So, it's a bit of a change of where I was beforehand. I still feel that Ren's going to be dying, going to be a dead man. Because if you look at, um, if you notice here, uh, like in, in 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 my on my screen, you notice here I'm at the the particular episode called Fault, which is I believe um, Volume Eight, Chapter Four. Now I I remember that at the very end of this particular episode is that where Ren's by himself, you see that crack, and it's like. I think certain things in the sense of like that, I think it's like, would, does he still want to be, to remain a huntsman or what? You know, he had a bit of a change of heart from episode, chapter four to chapter five. I don't think it's going to be enough for him, you know, to survive. Now, um, regarding the whole thing with um, the episode, chapter six and chapter seven, uh, I'm going to stand by what I said when I said Emerald's going to be the one that um, does the about face to her allegiance with both Cinder and Salem. I still feel she's going to be the one that portrays them both. Because it's like if you try to get somebody to go against whatever they were, you have to figure out who is the most susceptible. And, and I remember a particular scene in Volume 7 where Emerald grew... Fearful of Salem's incentive for her actions. 
I think it's because of that little um, blink and you'll miss moment. And what's going on furthermore in volume eight, I'm calling Emerald to be the one that portrays both Salem and Cinder. And with, uh, um, with Mercury heading to Vacuo, we probably won't be seeing him until the Vacuo, Vacuo arc proper, which if it's confirmed to go into volume 10, volume 11, I do feel that we're not going to be seeing Mercury again until volume 10, if the show goes to, to that point. So, um, yeah, so Mercury is still, you know, going to be Team Salem. I think Mer Emerald's going to be like, I'm out. I'm done. I'm done with this. Because Sam, but Sam, you know, it's like, uh, I'm like, uh, I'm like, eh, eh, eh. you know what I mean. And then with Sinner, it's just like, I mean, it's one of those, it's like, I think Emerald's going to be seeing the error of Cinder's ways. And then for another aspect of Volume 8B, is that we're going to get a little bit more of how Sinner got to be where she exactly is. Because we got one part of her backstory, but I think we're going to be seeing the other part of the backstory in the second half. Now, as to whether or not she dies, it's like, that's another, that's, I treat her like Penny. You know, that's going to be up in the air. Anything can happen. Now, with uh, Penny, you know, if she does die, she's not going to have a conventional death, meaning that if she does die, it's going to be like the um, the android side of things, and she becomes 100% human. Whereas for Cinder, if she does die, it's going to be like the last of her humanity. She becomes a full blown grim, and she becomes more susceptible to, to die. And for the part about Cinder, the reason why I say that is because I forgot which volume it is. I don't know if it's volume 4 or volume 5 where Salem warns her to be careful around people like Ruby, those with silver eyes, because Salem only has so much in the sense of her powers remaining that it, it's like, how do I want to word this? It's like, she can only do so much before Salem's completely run out of resources. And the whole thing with vol when in Volume 5 where Os Oscar slash Ospit were, were, were confirming that sort of thing is that, you know, his um, his resources are depleting. So it kind of hits off of, like, the whole thing with Sam was, like, she's about to run out. And um, with that bit out of the way, you know, it's going to be interesting. I do think that, you know, the whole thing with why she is becoming, like, a much more important character for this volume. Not in the conventional sense, but it's like some of the stuff, you know, Weiss has been knowing about. She's going to be the one revealing it. So, um, and the whole thought, and the whole hug with, between Weiss and um, Whitley from the first half, I'm like, we might be seeing a change of Whitley in the sense of like, we get to know a little bit more about him. In sense of like, you know, he's like, um, he was concerned about Nora, so that's why he called Klein. And we're probably going to be seeing like Whitley becoming his own person from Jacques. Now, regarding Jacques, I honestly don't know what's going to happen with him. It's anybody's guess. But regardless if he survives or dies, he had it coming. But the question will remain, you know, if Jacques does die, what will happen to the She Dust Company? What will Willa do with it? And I think, you know, if Jacques does die, Willa gets control of the, of the SDC. <clears throat> Is that she's probably going to be transforming it to where it's like a lot better. She just needs more time. And then the council see, you know, that Jacques had will open up again. And I think Raman's going to get that seat. So, um, yeah. So to do a quick recap, I think Nora's going to survive. Penny is up on the fence. Cinder's on the, up on the fence. Emerald's going to betray both Cinder and Salem. Um, for Mercury, we probably won't be seeing him until about volume 10. Um... For uh, Ren, I do think he's going to be the death here. It's going to be a bit of a major. 
Um, the whole the whole tw the whole thread from um, before. Some of it's probably going to happen. Some of it's not because you know you got to take information given with a grain of salt. Um, if Penny does die, it's going to be she's going to become one hundred percent human, while Cinder becomes one hundred percent grim. The whole thing with Salem and Oz, you know, their powers are depleting even further. Um, so that's going to play in a role to what's to come. Uh, for Jacques, you know, his fate is up in the air in the sense of, uh, of you know, if he lives or dies. And for um, Crow, I don't, um, he might be able to escape in a sense. And because we still have that scene, that um, post credit scene from Volume 5, so we still have yet to get the extended nature of that. Uh, with Ironwood, he is going to be in big trouble. That's all I'm going to say on that. Um, I do need to start uh, get ready for work, so that's it on that. So I am done with this video. So with Wolfie here signing off, I will catch you all on the flip side.